Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Van Life and uh, I'm here to talk to you about this uh, special battery that we built for a customer. Uh, one of the things we seem to have specialized in is building batteries that fit into unique spaces. And uh, we, we built one like this fairly recently for uh, Nix's van and uh, it's a Mercedes Sprinter van conversion and this uh, went on the wheel arch or above the wheel arch uh, very successfully and so this is the uh, the next build of, of the same configuration so <clears throat> if I take you through the configuration you can see this is a 12 volt uh, battery lithium ion phosphate uh, four cells so one two three four uh, usually you stack these cells next to each other uh, that's the common format and then compress them. Uh, this is a longer, uh, thinner and uh, well we've made it a taller battery as well. Um, <clears throat> so if I talk you through it, uh, we built our own bus bars with 35 mil cable. Uh, a bit overkill for what this needs uh, because the customer only needs 100 amp so this can carry way way more than that but it future proofs it for him in, in the event that he wants to change the battery management system to a higher capacity a higher amperage he can do so so two flexible bus bars that we've made up uh, for this and then use the bus bar which is a copper uh, plated with with tin and uh, that's the standard one that came with this so all of these we will talk down to about uh, eight newton meters. Uh, they come with these studs uh, that are laser welded on here. This is very effective. We've uh, tested these to a very high amperage, uh, 160 to 200 amps, and found that over uh, extended use, they don't actually heat up much at all. In fact, the, the heat buildup on these wasn't from the contact. It was because the cell as a whole uh, heats up when you're drawing uh, current out of it. So <clears throat> to talk about the construction of the box, um, we've used these uh, connector nuts uh, extensively so it takes an allen key, well uh, the allen key to fasten it on the one end and a, a six millimeter or an M6 thread on the other end. So we, we have uh, six of these on each, each face uh, the, the side, the face is made of uh, plywood and then we have six of these with a thread bar connecting the, the, the two sheets of plywood. So two in the middle and two on each side. If I just talk a little bit about the compression of these cells. Um, in some ways a battery that is built like this is better than one that uh, is a drop-in replacement. The reason for it is that uh, tests by uh, companies like EVE have shown that if you compress the cells optimally, so not too much, not too little, uh, you will extend the number of cycles that the battery or the cells in the battery will last by up to a thousand. So if you want the battery to outlast you, that's what you need to do. Uh, with the conventional drop-in replacements, there's no room or there's not enough room to compress the cells effectively. All you can do, use is sort of tape that doesn't uh, stretch and that sort of thing, but you can't really uh, optimally compress them to the, the right amount. So with these, if you compress too much, it's worse than if you don't compress at all. So we have compressed these just the right amount uh, using a torque wrench. And uh, so we would expect these cells to, to last uh, definitely between three and 4,000 cycles. So it, they, this battery is going to last a very, very long time. So uh, <clears throat> it's currently at a full state of charge, which means it's pushing out on these, and that's great. We can see that the cells haven't moved at all. The, let's talk a little bit about the, why the cells uh, swell in there. So the cells swell when you are uh, reaching a full state of charge or if you are charging very rapidly or discharging very rapidly for that matter. And they swell, which is a natural thing. All cells do do swell. That causes two potential problems. Within the cell you've got the electrodes and uh, as they swell and contract and swell and contract all that movement uh, causes delamination of the substances on the electrodes and that uh, will diminish the lifespan of the of the cell. The second is pretty obvious as it expands if you don't uh, contain that 
uh, you will cause uh, structural stress on these uh, terminals and eventually there could be breakage uh, by continually uh, shrinking, uh, expanding and shrinking. So uh, these can't really move anymore. Uh, they, they will attempt to swell, uh, like I'm saying, it's just the right amount of compression that'll stop them doing it too much. And uh, so we would expect structurally this to be fine for a very long time and internally uh, diminished delamination of the electrodes. So this is the basic battery. Uh, onto this now we're going to place the uh, the balance leads, which will go with the, uh, the BMS. In this particular instance, the customer has asked for a 100 amp BMS. So this is the, the DALI 100 amp BMS that we are putting onto here. Uh, it has a temperature probe. So uh, we will set that to cut off at five degrees centigrade or less to protect the cells. One thing with lithium ion phosphate, if you don't already know, you should never charge them below zero degrees centigrade. And in fact, below five degrees, you should uh, reduce the amount of charge if you have a very high capacity charger. So we've set this to cut off at five degrees centigrade. It has a Bluetooth uh, dongle. So we'll mount this somewhere so that it uh, sends a nice signal and the customer will be able to use the, uh, the app supplied by DALI to monitor the battery and see what's going on. Uh, this is something that is fairly unique to us. It's always a pain to switch these on. You actually have to bridge two little pins in there. And so we supply these with a switch that uh, uh, this will be used to perform the first time switch on. And if any maintenance is done, so take off the balance leads to change the terminal or whatever, uh, this will help the customer to switch it back on, just press the switch down. Also, if the Bluetooth goes to sleep, which it does to uh, preserve battery. So Bluetooth obviously uses a little bit of current, a tiny bit of current, but on the long term it would flatten the battery. So uh, it goes to sleep and this then would wake up the Bluetooth. So that's the BMS, a tiny little guy, 100 amp. Uh, most of the batteries we, we sell have 200 amp, but anyway, this is great. Um, so we'll uh, now we'll be mounting the shelf on here. Uh, we'll put the balance leads on, mount the shelf in, place the BMS on top of the shelf, and uh, we'll uh, be supplying it with a cable coming off the positive terminal, and the customer can decide if he wants to work directly on the terminal or work off this cable. Right, uh, folks, I'm about to start putting the balance leads on. Uh, first, I need to uh, mount the um, BMS. I'm, I'm going to just put this on loosely for the time being just to get the balance leads and I'll be spinning this around. Uh, when you're doing this kind of thing, always wear safety glasses um, if you value your eyesight. Just on the million to one chance that you short something and a bit of hot molten metal flies out and hits your eye. Uh, so always wear glasses to protect your eyes. Right, so always I always mount the, uh, the cable down first. Uh, and then the balance lead on top of that. And the reason for it is uh, just to get as much connectivity uh, onto the terminal as possible. But I'm just tightening this. We'll spin it around later on and uh, get it into position. I just wanted to get all the balance leads on. The remainder of the balance leads I will tighten down properly. So first black cable goes on to the main negative terminal. The next red cable. If you have time, label your cables. It just makes it a little bit easier. The next red cable next to the black cable goes on to the positive terminal of cell number one. Cell number one is the one that is uh, got the main negative. And so that's how we number them. So balance lead goes down, little washer, and then we've got these nice um, nuts with a flange on them. We've set our torque wrench to eight Newton meters, which will be more than enough for this. In fact, eight Newton meters is absolutely fine for about 200 amps. So it, this, the 100 amp is gonna be absolutely fine on this. Uh, and I'm gonna tighten this down now to its correct torque. Uh, once the shelf is over here, we won't be able to get to these bolts anymore. So let's get this down. There 
there we are. First one, torque down to eight newton meters. As I said, we'll come to this one last. I just want to double check the torque of this. Again, eight newton meters, that's ideal. <coughs> and the next balance lead which is this one here will come to cell number two so this is cell number two down as well. Right, negative for cell number three, just going to check the torque. So really torque to the right amount. Next balance lead. Lead number three goes on to the third positive terminal. Check the torque on the fourth and final negative. There we are. Now the final one is the uh, the main positive terminal. So we're supplying a short lead. It goes on there. Balance lead on top of that. We find using a washer is pretty important because if you don't, the uh, nut forces the balance lead terminal to spin, which you don't really want. Finally, torque this one down. So we're placing the shelf in such a way that we can get to the main terminals. So obviously we won't be able to get to um, two of the nuts, but that's fine. We're happy with that. We can get to those two and if need be, we can get to those two. So it's just those two under there that if we ever needed to get to them, uh, we wouldn't be able to <clears throat> without removing the shelf. So that's fine. We're um, happy with that there. Just need one screw on each side. No need for overkill. That's perfect. So the BMS is now mounted.
Right, we have uh, completed the assembly. Now we are going to plug the balance leads into the BMS. And that's everything done. Now when I measure the voltage, it should be somewhere around three volts. 2 point something, which is what we expect because we have not yet turned the BMS on. So, uh, as I said before, you bridge those two connectors. We've got this little switch that allows us to do it. So now, 14 volts exactly. This battery is busy going to rest. So it'll uh, settle down in the next hour or so at about 13.6, uh, 13.7 volts. So <clears throat> uh, we've gone into the the app um, and you can see that the device is listed here. One of the things that you need to remember is you do not pay this uh, Bluetooth device with your phone. You just go straight into the application and it should find all the available devices within range. So let's go into that. Takes a while to establish comms. And there we are. So the important thing is what is the voltage and um, what are the individual cells. So there are the individual cells and the, uh, the delta is very important. So the delta is the difference between the maximum cell and the minimum cell giving us a total here of 0.055, which is great. This is what we want to see. Uh, anything uh, less than 0.1 is fine, especially above or below the knees. Uh, that would be great. When, when you're within the knees, you want that to, to be even less, which, is, which it will be. Right, so that tells us important stuff. The battery is at 14 degrees centigrade. That's the ambient temperature here at the moment. Uh, this is pretty much the temperature that we tested it at, and it tested out to 285 amp hours at about 15, 16 degrees centigrade. So uh, it, if tested at the correct temperature of 25, it would be a little bit more capacity. Uh, we always set these up. So there are two changes we make and I've already made them, but basically the cell vault high protect comes at 3.75. We change it to 3.65. The uh, cell vault low protect comes at 2.2. Uh, we change it to 2.5. So we have a little bit less capacity, but really not much because that, you know, to, to change those voltages, you, you only lose two or three percent of the capacity of the battery. But that's fine because the battery will last much longer. The other thing that we change is the temperature, which the, the charge low temperature protect is by default at minus 20, which is absolutely crazy for lithium ion phosphate. So we change that to five degrees centigrade. Those are the two changes we make. So that's everything done with this battery. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, have uh, completed all of the uh, construction, the configuration. We've completed the uh, settings on the BMS to protect the battery. Uh, we're convinced that it's gonna last a very, very long time. Um, will definitely outlast the vehicle that it is going into, with, absolutely without a doubt. Uh, got uh, Bluetooth working, we've uh, checked it on the app. Uh, he has two leads uh, that he can connect to, or he could go straight to this terminal if he wants to. Uh, he'll have to come off this terminal, there's no choice in that. He could put a bus bar here if he wanted to. For that matter, he could put a bus bar here and then uh, come off those. Uh, so, yep, everything ready to go. Uh, nice, easy carry handles. It's about, I uh, haven't weighed it, but I'm guessing it's about 22, 23 uh, kilograms. Uh, not bad for 280 amp hours. And uh, we found these are really, really uh, good. You know, running microwaves or whatever, they really, really perform well. And that's it. Mm -hmm.